So the topic today is about whether should the children from five to eleven years old should be vaccinated. As you know that in Thailand, the vaccination campaign in children kicked off already. But uh, many parents have their concerns and whether it is safe for my children, whether is it going to cause a, a side effect, or um, should the children be vaccinated since they already have high immune system? So I would like to ask Dr. Shisanu first. Uh, what do you think about this? Could you please share your point of view and perspective? Whether should children be vaccinated at this stage? Yeah, there are so many concerns, you know, among parents, and some concerns are rumors and fake news. So that's why the decision cannot be made by the parents. So they have to listen to the government, to the Ministry of Public Health and also the reliable scientist. So, you know, the drama was found because they choose to listen to rumors and fake news. Mm. I believe that the side effect of the vaccines used in small children will be less than older children and adults. Mm. Since we give only one third of the adult dose for this group of children. So the side effect will be less and less severe. Mm -hmm. What about you, Dr. Um, Tani Ha? How is it like in the US? Could you please share your perspective and point of view? In well, I, I share Dr. Shisano's concern as well, because uh, everywhere, especially in the United States, there are a lot of fake news and there are a lot of rumors here as well. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that for the fact, um, you have to look at the, the situation here. Since Omicron hit United States, the rate of hospitalization for children is actually sky high, rock, skyrocketing. Um, and it's peaked around early January. At that point, most of the people initially thought that, well, Delta might not be that dangerous for children. And they thought so for Omicron in, in, initially. But the thing that we are seeing a lot of, uh, actually a double in hospitalization in children um, who has not been vaccinated. And they're quite sick. They're not just like having a sniffles or sore throat fever or something like that. They're in respiratory failure and requiring mechanical ventilations in the ICU. So this is quite concerning. And therefore, the development of the vaccine is very helpful. Uh, moreover, children, we don't know anything yet about uh, whether they're going to be a long-term side effect from the COVID itself because we know in the adult there's a long COVID, which means um, even though your body can clear the virus, um, but your, your body suffers for a very long period of time. And we don't know that yet for children. Maybe that will affect their development of the brain or other systems, which is quite important as well. Uh, moreover, I'm not sure about the younger children, but I've taken care of the teenager who have multiple system inflammatory syndrome, which is mm -hmm. basically a very severe consequence of COVID they might get COVID initially and they don't have symptoms. They may be completely normal. Um, mm -hmm. And then two to six weeks later, they develop a severe inflammation of their system. They have rashes, they have fever, which is very high. Their lungs may stop working, their kidneys stop working, their heart become inflamed, and their blood pressure may, may drop to a very um, severe condition. So they end up in the ICU. And these people are very difficult to treat and they have long-term side effects from all the medication and all the inflammation they can get and we know that the vaccine cut down the rate of all these things by at least 90 percent mm -hmm. so that alone um for for me it's enough a good reason for the children to be vaccinated you know mm -hmm. nobody wants children to be in in that particular re, um situation especially mm -hmm. parents you know when you compare the side effect of the vaccine you have to compare the side effect of the vaccine the side effect of having COVID and whether your, your children will have severe consequences like this or not, or will they have long-term uh, devel development problems? You know, because they always think about uh, the vaccine as, may well, maybe we don't know much about the mRNA mm -hmm. vaccine yet. Maybe there's something in the future. But if you get COVID, you get a problem right now, right? Mm -hmm. You may not have children for you to worry anymore if you don't get vaccinated, right? And if, if your children are one of those who have um, 
long-term COVID or have developmental problems, well, that's not a good thing. And we don't even know whether that can be fixed or not. So, mm -hmm. so that's just my perspective here. Mm -hmm. So there's a drama, whether um, mRNA is actually good, whether mRNA is dangerous, whether mRNA gonna change, for example, the genes, you know, like I would like to ask Dr. Um, Chisano first, is mRNA vaccine, is it safe for children? Should parents be concerned about that? Even though it's a new technology, Mm -hmm. But we believe that we use this technology for the previous vaccines given to the children. So we think uh, it's pretty safe. The concerns, the major concerns uh, is, are not proved at the present time. So I agree with Dr. Tani, stay with the presence. Don't look too much in the futures, the concerns that may not happen. I think science cannot explain the, the major concerns that the parents have about the future complications of this mRNA vaccine. Mm -hmm. What about the non-mRNA vaccine, like um, inactivated vaccine, for example, that we're going to maybe possibly approve, but it has been approved to use it in other countries already. Uh, do you have any views about that? Yeah. Dr. Shisano? Yeah, the side effects may be less, but the important part is the mm. Q vaccines cannot prevent Omicron. Mm. This is very important. They can reduce the severity, but they cannot prevent Omicron as well. As we know, at the present time, mRNA is the best COVID vaccines we have. So I would say mRNA only for children that will save children from COVID and Omicron. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Tony, how could you please share your perspective from an, a um, from a U.S. perspective on that? Do in the U.S.A. Uh, mostly the vaccine, of course, there are mRNA, right? Uh, and do you have any dramas about this? You know, people against vaccines, or should we be should the children be vaccinated with mRNA vaccine? Do you have anything like this in the U.S.? Yeah, obviously, I think all of these news spread from the U.S. <laughs> well, uh, to Thailand, in, in which you know some people from Thailand send me some of the new links or something like that that has some um, base from the U.S. standpoint. Mm -hmm. Uh, the thing is that people are concerned about mRNA because it's a new vaccine, right? And it entered your cells. Um, but what I'm going to explain here is the mRNA, mRNA itself is quite vulnerable. If you don't have anything to protect the mRNA vaccine, you put it in like room temperature, it will dissolve. Mm -hmm. It will just go away. Um, and that's why you have to put it in like a, a fridge which has very low temperature or something like that. That's it's that vulnerable. And people always thought about, oh, what if the vaccines got delivered incorrectly or uh, maybe the logistic part of it is, is not that mm. good. Maybe the vaccine may not be that effective. If you think about this, uh, you're, you're actually seeing the fact that the vaccines are quite vulnerable. And in fact, the mRNA vaccine, it enter your cells, it get transcribed into a, a spike protein. And after it's done, translating or transcribing it, then it will just be destroyed by the cell. Usually it's mm -hmm. be, it is gone by the first week. Mm -hmm. And after it's gone, your body learned the new skill of finding out the virus, which is something. So you can imagine that like, after one week, you don't have vaccine left in your system anymore. But what mm -hmm. you have is the long-term immunity. So if you think about it this way, I couldn't find a good reason for it to have a long-term side effect. Um, mm. Also, some, some people think it might mess up your um, DNA or something. Well, the thing <laughs> is, in your cells, you have two compartments mainly. The one is the nucleus. The nucleus mm. is the, the room that stores your DNA. And the mRNA doesn't go near that part at all. It stays outside of that part. So how could it get into that nucleus and do something like that, right? It doesn't have the means to go into the nucleus. Uh, if you mm. think about this, mm. I would say um, the viral vector may have more concerns because it has to go into the nucleus first and then translate into mRNA again and then mm. do it do the rest of the work. 
So, so that that would be a concern. And the thing, moreover, uh, in the United States, you you see like these children who are unvaccinated are getting mm. sicker and they're getting uh, hospitalized more and more. And mm. you know that's that's the real data that we we cannot fake, right? It's everywhere mm. in the news, and we we know that those who are vaccinated, it, it's not that sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should we call the myth of mRNA? <laughs> well, um, we, we can talk about this all day long. It depends on what, what myth you're talking about. So people will think about, oh, they might cause infertility or they might cause um, mm -hmm. brain development problems and, and so on, mm -hmm. you know, which has no basis behind it. And if you think about, well, you don't have the actual data in the future, um, but at least you should be able to um, use your understanding, mm -hmm. especially medical understanding to describe the mechanism behind why it could happen. And if you cannot mm -hmm. even think about mechanism of how do, that would happen, well, it's just a myth that you can just create mm -hmm. anything. And people mm -hmm. always, or, or some parents or some people who doesn't want to get vaccinated, they just mm -hmm. come to us and say, you know, you don't have long-term data. How can you be so sure that won't happen? I would mm -hmm. say, well, at least based on current data and current understanding and all the evidence that we have, it does mm -hmm. not point that way. And we cannot use the data that suggests some trivial thing mm -hmm. or some myth to guide us, us uh, to make decision based on something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that would I would like... I would like to ask because there's questions and concern that, you know, the has been developed. It's the... They were developed at the stage of the original um, virus where mm. the the Wuhan virus, basically, but now we have different variants like Delta, Omicron, and all those things. Would it be effective to well, tackle? Yeah, the, the thing is that yes. we have to understand, at least right now, the mRNA vaccine has proven to be effective against all the variants in the past, mm. right? It start from mm -hmm. Wuhan, then Alpha, beta and so on um, so it's still effective and the reason why that is effective i think is because it stimulates some of the very important component of your immune system which is the cell component and called t cell so t mm. cell fight off the severe infection uh, to make it easy for people to understand and if you can stimulate these cells it doesn't matter how much um, mm. variability that the virus can be um, these cells can still be effective in killing those cells who got uh, infected so they won't spread to the other part of your body and that's about, why i think it's too important mm -hmm. what about you Kai, dr shisano yes i agree with uh dr tani that you know the um, mrna vaccine is the best at the present time until mm -hmm. we have q vaccine the second generation that can cover delta and uh, oh my crunch. Oh my crunch. Mm -hmm. So we have no choices at the present time. You have to make decision mm -hmm. about you know the the disease that the children will get and the side effect of of the vaccine that I as a pediatrician infectious mm -hmm. disease specialist who have been working with vaccines for 30 years, mm -hmm. we accept it. We I accept see. the side effects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except yeah. myocarditis, that is very uncommon in small children because mm -hmm. we see this in older children and adolescents and we have passed, you know, the era that we give the vaccine for mm -hmm. Thai children aged uh, 12 to 18 mm -hmm. and myocarditis is very uncommon and self-limited, mm -hmm. be treated mm -hmm. and no death. Mm -hmm. Talking about the vaccine and also the effects, the symptoms of COVID-19 are supposed to be like different in children at different ages or I mean compared to the adults too, the symptoms? Yeah, I would say that generally speaking, uh, children who are infected with coronavirus, uh, the symptoms may be less than adults. Mm -hmm. But it may be severe, as Dr. Tani said, that in chronically ill children, in obese children, and even mm -hmm. healthy children, 
we cannot tell that uh, which child will get infected and be severe or not. But the problem is the late complication that is very serious, even though it's not very common. Like mm -hmm. we say, long COVID that we see in adult that can be found in children also, and diabetes. Mm -hmm. So there are so many late, long complications will that will happen after getting infected. So don't look at only the symptoms of COVID itself, but you have to look at the long-term complications. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the family that have children infected with coronavirus is very, you know, confusing. They affect the family so much. They have to find the hospital beds to uh, get the mm -hmm. children in. There are so many, you know, turmoil uh, in the situation. So don't look only the symptoms, but look the effects mm. after the children being infected with coronavirus. Thank you. Ajahn Kap, and do the new variants impact children differently? Oh, yes. We expect that Omicron will affect children because they are not immune and they spread rapidly. And we mm. put the children at home, learn from home, also adults work from home. But as we learn from Delta era, the, the infections occur in families. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, there are very few clusters in the society, but you know, the family. So the family members will get the virus, mm -hmm. even though they get vaccinated and they don't have any symptoms and bring this germ to the children. The children are not immune, so they get infected. So we I expect see. that in the Omicron era, children will be the key population that are infected. I see. And are uh, five to 11 years old children getting vaccinated? They now meeting the target set? Just uh, people may think that we have, we, we still have no real reason to get the children to get the vaccinated, but we already have the target too. So what do you think about this uh, five and 11 years old children getting vaccinated in, in meeting yeah. the targets? <clears throat> I have been waiting for this vaccine for a few years as a pediatrician. Oh. I don't think that there will be a lots of drama news that make the <laughs> society confused, <laughs> but However, I think the parents need to make a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been waiting for this vaccine and we mm -hmm. start to vaccinate in February, starting with chronically ill patients that give mm -hmm. vaccinations in the hospitals. Now, this week, we just start to give vaccination in schools for healthy children. Mm -hmm. So pediatricians work so hard to be at the the schools to make sure that if there is immediate complications from vaccines that we believe we will not see it okay but mm -hmm. pediatricians we take care of this but mm -hmm. we have to look at the side effects that will mm -hmm. occur about a few days after vaccination such as fever rash uh, diarrhea um, myalgia and so on but these side effects can be found in other vaccines and also found in adults like us. So if we accept the side effects, I mm. think it's very safe. Next, mm. we have to watch for myocarditis, even though that myocarditis will be very less, okay, in this group of children. But we have to watch for palpitation and chest pain in small children if they have symptoms like this, go to the hospital and the pediatrician will take care of them. Mm. But for long term complications, I wouldn't say anything. Mm. So as for Dr. Tani, um, what do you think about do the new variants impact children differently? And also how is the vaccine, uh, vaccination situation in the US? 
uh, going on right now. Could you please share your view on this? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm no pediatrician here, so I have to look at the data or maybe ask my friend who is a pediatrician. Uh, and Dr. Chison knows know more about that than me. Um, so the thing is, in, in the United States, we know that the children got infected so much and they got uh, hospitalized in a record high as compared to when there was a Delta variant. Maybe that's just because children react differently or maybe it's just because Omicron spread so rapidly and the children just got affected more because of the numbers that we're seeing people are sick. Um, so I think in that regards, I, I, I cannot be so sure whether the children will be affected more because of this Omicron variant or not, but we are seeing the number of hospitalization children go up. Um, second thing is the vaccination situation here. Um, we see in, in, in the United States, there are about 30 million children in the age of 5 to 11 years old. And about maybe right now, one third of them are, are vaccinated. So that's a situation right now. The thing is, in the first two months, the rate of vaccination among these population um, went up quite high, but then it dropped back down and just hover around um, some numbers. And I think part of it is because the people and especially parents who are concerned about the virus more than the vaccine, they get all their children vaccinated right up front. And now mm -hmm. they're just trickling in just because of misinformation and people are spreading news about these concerns mm. and therefore in the United States, uh, it's since the United States is the country where all these information are readily available. So mm -hmm. that means both the correct information and the incorrect information, even if mm -hmm. people in the incorrect information side said, well, that's, uh, it's, it's warranted for them to, to speak it out, speak it up here. And they, they even uh, arrange for political parties to talk about all these things. And, and we have seen a lot of uh, videos went viral and they're circulating mm -hmm. around the United States also in Thailand about all these things. And, and that's a concern so far. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the situation right now, which I think uh, we cannot vaccinate all the children just because of this. Mm -hmm. But from that, uh, after being vaccinated, are there any reported about the severe side effect in children in the U.S.? No. So I see in, in, in kids, 5 to 11 years old, we've been vaccinating them, uh, I think, since May last year. And there's no report of severe side effect. And so far, we know that mRNA vaccine may cause inflammation of the heart or the, or the um, lining of the heart itself, but it seems to be quite self-limited. Uh, we usually, from the report, it's um, a four-day treatment and hospitalization in, in total, two usually. And then um, these children are follow-up for a long-term side effect, and they don't have any. And therefore, this is why the United States still recommend the vaccines in this age group. And mm -hmm. moreover, they're looking into approval for children younger than that from um, six month old to uh, four years old using about one tenth of the Pfizer vaccine and the the research has been done already and they they finished this research a long time ago mm -hmm. um, however in Thailand I have a little bit of concern about the killed vaccine or life attenuated vaccine or something like that especially killed vaccine because I do not see a lot of data about it um, mm -hmm. Maybe I, I didn't look into this because United States, we do not have killed vaccine. So maybe uh, in, in the context of Thailand, we have to look into that further. But according to my review, we know that in adults, the Q vaccine does not help much and people can still get very sick despite getting a full vaccination with the Q vaccine. We have more data about uh, of the mRNA vaccine, both the efficacy and the side effect and the real world data, we have more of that than than the kill vaccine. So so that's just my concern for for Thai people, especially now we are approving this for kids and using the same dosage for the adult. The kill vaccine is it inactivated vaccines? Uh, no, no, it's not. It's is the the vaccine. You mean you use the entire virus, but it's already dead. Mm. 
So, so right. to me, uh, um, to, okay. to explain this a little further, um, kill vaccine is just like you read a book. It, so the kill vaccine is a, is a virus that is dead and it has a multiple components that your immune system can react to. It's just like right. reading a book, like maybe a 100 pages mm -hmm. for it, and then you have to take an exam. Um, reading all these things, because the exam can be from any pages, but mRNA vaccines is quite specific to part of that book to say, hey, maybe you read this 10 pages, and then the exam will be around this 10 pages and you can do it. So if you focus on something, then you might be able to mount a good memory to it, especially immune system, you mount the memory to the spike protein, and this way it may be more effective uh, rather than having to read the entire book just to have one exam. And the thing is, if you use a kill virus, it's just like you're reading a book one time because the virus does not replicate itself, unlike the real infection. Because if you get a real infection, the virus gets in your body, it replicates and you can learn from multiple parts of the virus. Um, but I don't suggest you go get the virus infection just because then you will be dealing with possible side effect or other consequences. We do not want you yourself or your kids to have it. Um, and that just the, the differences between getting a real virus, getting a killed virus vaccine, or getting an MRA vaccine in, in terms of efficacy for, for me to make, a, make it a little bit um, easier for people mm. to see why it's so, not working that well. So in another word, is you recommend the mm. mRNA for its best effectiveness, basically. Ha. Basically, if you have enough, the, enough vaccine, um, you should go for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you like to share your view, Ka, Dr. Shisanu? Yeah. Now you have to make a decision because the government will have three regimens or regimes to choose. At the beginning, they will give two doses of Pfizer. Mm -hmm. But as parents have major concerns about the mRNA vaccine, especially two doses of Pfizer. Mm -hmm. So they have two other choices. Two doses of Sinovac mm. that did not help, and uh, Sinovac and Pfizer to decrease mm. the number of Pfizer from two to one. That may help, mm. but there are very limited data about this interchange. So, if you accept mRNA, get two doses of Pfizer. If you are afraid that the second dose of Pfizer may cause myocarditis, choose Sinovac Pfizer. Mm. If you don't want any mRNA vaccine, go ahead and choose the last choice that is not mm. so good. And in the future, you will get mRNA anyway. So it's pretty hard for the parents to make a decision. I don't know mm. why the government <laughs> have two other choices. I don't know to agree with this but that's the way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right but um well the parents have a lot of concern about what you just said myocarditis um then last what would be your advice to the parents on this there are through groups of parents the first one they can make decisions go ahead and get it and I think that pediatricians will take care of your children really well. I believe that they will be safe from vaccination and they will be protected from COVID. The second group is the one who hesitate to make a decision. You have to learn more about the information that should be reliable information, but mm -hmm. don't wait so long. COVID is everywhere at the present mm -hmm. time, especially mm -hmm. Omicron. The mm -hmm. last, the anti-vaccine group, anyway, I will not get vaccination. So protect yourself well and be lucky. Mm -hmm. As of today's Thailand infection rate is over 10,000 mm -hmm. people already. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ka, Dr. Tani? What would be your advice to the parents who are concerned about whether my kids should get vaccination or not, whether the vaccine is safe for my kids? Well, I would say a bottom line is if it were my <laughs> children or my kids, um, my nephew, my niece, 
I would say go get mRNA vaccine right now. Mm-hmm. However, I understand there's concerns everywhere about parents, like Dr. Chisholm uh, said, and I would agree that you might have to think about them as well. If you if you can make a decision, go get mRNA vaccine, go get it. If you think about that as maybe they have potential side effect that you are not accepting. Um, Sinovac might be your other options, but they are not as effective as we know. We have always, um, we, we know that they have limited data. And last but not least, obviously, if you do not want any vaccination, just get lucky. I think luck is very important these days. <laughs> I, I, if you get lucky, you might not get infected or you might get uh, very mild symptoms. And um, you have to hope that you do not have uh, a weird side effect such as multiple system inflammatory syndrome. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. after infection or you don't have long COVID in kids or you don't have any unknown side effect about your development, um, mm-hmm. I hope that way. And, and we know that you know, probably you have to wear masks, teach your children to wash your hands and those kind of things. And children's younger than two, uh, well, they cannot wear a mask anyway, but you have to um, at least prepare them for what is the safest way to survive in this world because I do not think coronavirus right now is just probably it just the the thing that tells you there's something like this in the world that might happen again and there's no mm-hmm. one can who can guarantee this Omicron will be the last wave of it and mm-hmm. even if it is a last wave of it who can guarantee maybe there's a new vir- a new virus somewhere out there that could mm-hmm. attack us like this. And we just have to be prepared. And now we are quite prepared. We learn a lot about them as well right now. Well, I hope can it be in another 100 years mm-hmm. later, not any soon, please. <laughs> Otherwise we can't do anything. Okay, and that's it for today. So in conclusions, I think uh, getting vaccinated is actually better than not having vaccinated at all. But it's also a personal choice and it's also up to the parents considerations but as you both say that you know getting vaccinated having vaccines inside a body help prevent severe conditions Mm -hmm. but it still doesn't help prevent the um uh to get infected so we will leave it to the parents but uh thank you for sharing your information for this morning it was very um informative and i hope that if the parents are watching right now, I hope they would have that choice or this this interview would help them and guide them to make the decision for their children. So thank you again, Dr. Shisanu and Dr. Tani Ka. And I hope to have you back on my program again and for today. So thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.